Hello all, so in the last tutorial we have seen partial reconfiguration in action. So we used the JTAG interface for sending the partial bitstream while our system was running. But uh, as I mentioned, practically it's difficult to always have JTAG interface between the board and a computer, uh, especially when you want a standalone system. So what we need is uh, we need some other way of reconfiguring our chip without the JTAG interface. And there are many ways of doing it depending upon the kind of chip that you have. So for Zing um, family of chips, so Zing or Zing ultra scale devices, we have an interface called PCAP processor configuration access port using which you can reconfigure the PL part of the chip from PS. Okay. So if you go to the Zing block here, uh, you can see a part called dev c this one device configuration so this pcap interface is part of this device configuration block device configuration it has some other blocks also but uh, now you are looking at only the pcap interface now again the details of pcap uh, if you want to know we'll have to look at the technical reference manual drm uh, under that section 4 6.4.3 it discusses about the pcap bridge between ps and pl okay again uh, you don't have to know all the details here basic idea i will tell you so basically yeah so this is what is interesting for us using this pcap bridge what you can do is you can read a bitstream from memory it can be either ocm on chip memory the internal ram or it can be off chip memory like our dram okay so we are going to use the dram memory so what we are going to do is initially from sd card we will transfer the partial bitstream to the external memory ddr and from ddr we will use this interface the pcap interface to transfer it to the pl the FPGA fabric and he is able to reconfigure the FPGA fabric. So internally PCAP it has a DMA controller and he is the one who is transferring bitstream from external memory to the fabric. It is also possible to read back okay so after programming FPGA if you wish you can get that bitstream if it is enabled actually yeah, you can block it but if it is enabled you can read back the configuration information, the bitstream from the FPGA fabric and send it back to the DRAM also. So in certain cases, we are interested in reading the bitstream back from the FPGA, especially to check uh, during runtime whether something happened to the reconfiguration information. Uh, that is usually possible uh, under condition like a single event upset. That means you are using FPGAs for some aerospace application and because of gamma radiation, it is possible the configuration in information changes because of this uh, high energy particles. They are hitting uh, the configuration memory of chip. So it is possible the bitstream that you program into the FPGA actually changes during runtime. So if that happens, uh, your chip may behave differently. So what we need to do is time to time, we will read back the configuration information from the FPGA and we will check if there is any error. If there is any error, we will reprogram it. Anyway, we are not going to look at it. Our aim is just to reprogram the PL part from uh, our PS. So we are going to use PCAP. So in the hardware design, there is no difference. Okay, your block design, nothing changes. You keep as such everything uh, and uh, same step and you generate the bitstream okay so that's what we did in the previous tutorial we, we already have the partial bitstream so remember so we have these three folders config1 config2 config3 and they contain the full name okay now you cannot directly use this dot bit file for programming through pcap because this bit file it contains not only the configuration information it has some header portion also some header information so if you open any bit stream, you can see like okay so this is the conduct so in this bit stream the actual 
configuration information is starting from here ff 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 okay so you will see this continuous chain of ff that is where the actual bitstream is starting everything before this is again a header information and actually you can see like what is in the header so header basically has the information about the name of the top module it also has information whether it's a partial bitstream or not it has the information about which vivado version was used to generate this bitstream uh, the target device okay this one this is our target device and the date and time when this bitstream was generated so this information are in the head head part and header part and this is helpful to the programmer so that when you try to program the fpga he will first check whether this bitstream is indebted for this target fpga if it is not targeted for this fpga he'll say like okay bitstreams are not matching some error so that's where this error is required but when you are sending bitstream directly through the pkv interface this header portion should go away we should have only starting from here that is one thing another thing is the order in which information is stored inside uh, this bit file and the order in which bytes are expected by pcap are reversed uh, for example again here data is considered always in 32 bits so in normal bit stream a 32 bit data will be stored like this 0000000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000 bb so 00 is our ls byte and bb is our ms byte this is we call as a little endian representation but for pcap interface the bit stream order should be other way it should be bb 00000000 okay uh, so that's the another case so what you need to do is first of all you need to convert this bit stream into a format we call it as a bin file with extension dot bin which will be understood by the pcap interface when you are transferring it through pcap interface yeah the bit stream has to follow uh, that bit order now to do all these things removing this header as well as changing this uh, byte order uh, silings they provide uh, a interface so we have this command write config memory so this write config memory this command is used not only for preparing bitstream for pcap it can be used for preparing bitstream for other non-volatile memory for example you can store your bitstream in uh, flash chip ppa flash or spa flash and you can program fpga from those kind of memory for that also we will use the same command okay so in this command yeah you you need to specify we want it in bin format format bin and you are saying we are expecting a 32 bit interface again this is kind of dummy when we are aiming for pcap just to tell this guy we need a 32 bit uh, ordering and this one disable bit swap okay this will put the bytes in the exact order in which we are expecting it in the bin file so this we need okay remember to keep it if you are aiming for pcap interface then you need to say the bitstream which you want to convert so this part should be always up 0x0 zero zero. again for pcap this doesn't make much sense for other non-volatile memory you are saying like you want to store bitstream starting from address 0 in the external memory anyway here we need to put it a uh, dummy one here you specify your input bit file name and here you specify your output bin file name okay so i am taking this partial bitstream and let me see this is config one so output bitstream let me call it sobel.bin so let me copy this command you can copy that command and come to vivado and in the tickle if you are giving entire bitstream path yeah you can just execute it anywhere in vivado you don't have to change directory or anything and just run it so let's go to that folder and see here so he has created okay so this is our bin file and if we open it now you can see like it has only ff starting from ff and the order has also changed 0000, 000 instead of that 
now it is bb0000 okay so this is how we prepare the bitstream targeting for pcap now let me convert all partial bitstreams like that so config two and it was sharp and config 3 is blah okay so now we have all the streams here we have blur dot bin sobel dot bin and sharp dot bin now we need to copy them to our sd card so blur dot bin sharp dot bin sobel dot bin i'm going to sd card and let me create a new folder here just to show like you can have folders so pr bits and i'm keeping for my partial bit streams here okay, so now let's put the sd card back to our boot so the main work is in software so in our sdk i already have the project again most of the code is same as that we did uh, previously so the extra thing is i have written this header file and associated source code cap.h and this has all the code for transferring bit streams from sd card to our fpga fabric so inside pcap mm, this is the header file dev config okay so this is from silence this has basically uh, all the functions for managing pcap we are just abstracting them okay so in this header file again we have declared a lot of new function we'll see main ones and also at the top i have declared the size of the partial bit stream this is the size of the partial bit stream that we are going to use for this project so you check the exact size 475556 that is the size of bit stream okay so for different project this size will change depending upon uh, the size of your pr region and where you have defined the PR region. Uh, again, it was possible to make it dynamic if we do dynamic memory allocation. Okay, so you can dynamically read that file, find the size of the partial bit stream file, and allocate. You can do like that also. Here it is statically declared because this is the buffer used for storing the partial bit stream. So this is again statically allocated okay now when you come down we have this function init pcap and this function will basically initialize the pcap again you will see a lot of constant declarations are here again uh, if you want to know the details you can look at the technical reference manual okay uh, i have also used most of them from silings reference design so they are basically to enable the internal uh, shift registers and barrel shifters things like that which manages the clock to pcap which manages the clock from pcap to fpga fabric things like that although there are certain condition uh, you can control uh, while you are using pcap whether jtag should be active whether you will be able to program through jtag whether you can program only through pcap and next tutorial we will discuss another interface called icap so you can at one time you you can use only one of these interfaces so all those configurations they are done using this function okay so you can directly call it whenever you want to use pcap just use this function and it will return success if it is successfully initialized and here we are initializing the sd card because our bitstream uh, that is sitting in the SD card. Okay, so in this example our image is again a constant array It's not from SD card if you want image data also you can put in SD card, but here we are using it for uh, storing our partial bit stream and Remaining code is exactly same The difference is here from our previous tutorial. Okay, so previously uh, We were doing reconfiguration through JTAC and here you can see what is happening so depending upon which filter you choose okay we have different cases so i can choose either 
original image, sobel, blur or sharp and depending upon which one I choose, I am calling this function partial reconfigure. Okay, again that is sitting in this pcap.c. So what that function does is it basically reads the bitstream from the SD card. So remember that is the code for reading from SD card. This one is the uh, one which is reading read file, which reads from SD card because you are providing the bitstream file name here and it puts it in that buffer for SD card. And this is the function. It, it will look like a DMATRAN, so you can see. And this is a function which transfers the partial bitstream from the memory, this buffer, to the PCAP and it will be finally used for configuration. So you have to give an instance of device configuration interface uh, which will be actually initialized inside PCAP in it. You will have to give a pointer where the bitstream is sitting, the size of the bitstream, and this is uh, the destination address for DMA. And in this case, you are sending to PCAP, so you can put any value there. It doesn't matter. And this one basically says whether you need secure transfer or not, whether your bitstream is encrypted or not. Presently, we are using unencrypted bitstream, so there is no uh, encryption. So you need to pass this parameter. Okay, and he will do partial reconfiguration. So this one is actually working based on polling. So this guy is checking whether PCAF has transferred the bitstream and he's checking whether reconfiguration operation is completed. If reconfiguration operation is completed, the function will return. Okay, so basically, depending upon what kind of uh, filter we want to use, the corresponding partial bitstream we are using to program our FPJ fabric. And once we have uh, finish partial reconfiguration. We will call this function. This is our old function, start image process, which will basically transfer this image data to our IP, and our IP is already reconfigured. So, depending upon what is the current uh, filter used, the output from image processing varies, and we take that output and just display it on the screen. Okay, so that's what is happening. So here are, again, you can see uh, you have to use forward slash if you are storing your file inside uh, folders or you have to use double backslash like this. Either this one or this one. This one won't work because it's like Linux style. And again, remember your uh, folder name that should be also less than eight characters. Otherwise also it won't work. So that's it. So we can now test it on hardware whether it is working or not. So run configuration as usual. You have to check these two options. Application is this one. And first time, like previously, we had to program with a full bit stream. OK, so let's program device. And let's choose config2 for programming. Okay, which I guess is sharp. Sharp, yeah. Okay, program. It's programmed. Okay, now let us run. Okay, so in Tarata, you can see the print. So here basically he's asking what you want to see. Original, Sobel, Blur, Sharp. Let's type original. So on the screen we can see the original one without any processing. Now let me choose two Sobel filter. And you can see the output is Sobel. Yeah, so what just happened? He did partial reconfiguration and he transferred image and we are seeing the image. We are now transferring it through JTAG. Uh, now if I choose blur, I can choose, I can see blurred one. If I choose sharp, I can see the sharp one. So you can see like yeah, it's it's happening quite fast actually, unlike our JTAG. Uh, PCAP interface, it gives around 130 Mbps reconfiguration speed. JTAG is few, two or three Mbps, I remember. Um, but uh, this one is much, much faster. So that's why you can see like reconfiguration 
and image processing is happening very fast. Now, another important uh, feature of PCAP is it can support not only partial reconfiguration, you can reconfigure your entire FPGA fabric using PCAP. Okay, you don't need the JTAG at all. So, what you have to do, you just put your full bitstream to SD card. And when the system boots up, you don't program it from JTAG. You just run the code from SDK and we will use a code which will read your full bitstream from SD card and uh, reconfigure it. Okay, so that's what we are going to try it. So first again, you have to choose one of the full bitstreams and convert it into the format that is supported by PCAP. So let's go here. Uh, bitstream config one. Let's choose config one itself. So let's take our old command, this one. And instead of choosing this partial bitstream, let's take the full bitstream. We have the full bitstream there, config one dot. And let me call it full dot in. Okay. So we have this bitstream now, full dot bin. This is a full bitstream. You can check the size. It is much larger. And we will put that full bitstream to our SD card. Okay, full bitstream we will put here. And we will put it back in the board. Now in software, you can see at the top I have a line commented now. Okay, so this is the size of the full bitstream. 0045, again, we have to check it from here and you can find it. What is the size of the full bitstream? Now I'm going to allocate that much memory. Okay, so this array will be used for storing full as well as partial bitstream. Since this is larger, yeah, that can definitely store this one also. So I'm putting it there and here you can see I have a function called full reconfigure. Again, it will look similar to our partial reconfigure function, but we need to do a few more configuration for supporting full reconfiguration. So again, details, the constant values you can check in the TRM, what is actually going on. But this bitstream, uh, this function, it will read the full bitstream and he will just reconfigure our so now let's go ahead and test this one. So I have put it, I have put the SD card back to my board. Okay, so I'm powering it off so that previous bitstream goes away. And I'm not going to program it at all now, this time from, from Vivado. I'm not programming it. I'm just running my SDK. Okay, and this time you will get this warning. Done pin is not high on target FPGA. Do you still want to continue logic the application? Because SDK detected that we haven't programmed the FPGA and without programming the FPGA, we are trying to run our software and he's actually using some hardware. So he's asking like, are you sure? Yes, we are sure because that reprogramming will be happening through PCAP. Okay, now if you look at the board now, you will see the blue LED turned on because we actually programmed our FPGA using PCAP. Now, here you can see the print also came. Okay, so now we can continue with our partial reconfiguration also. Okay, so this is the advantage of PCAP. You can configure your PL from PS. Uh, it supports both full reconfiguration as well as partial reconfiguration. That's the real advantage. Now, uh, maybe the slight drawback of PCAP is the throughput, the speed at which it can reconfigure. As I mentioned, it's around uh, 130 megabytes per second. That's the speed of reconfiguration. And our bitstream, if I take the full bitstream, this is around 4 MB. So you'll still see like it's it's quite fast, but for very high speed application, maybe you want to do configuration within few microseconds. 
so in that case pcap may not be uh, a good solution in that case we may have to go for even a faster reconfiguration interface called internal configuration access port or icap so that one we will discuss in the next tutorial thank you